NAD here today, today to talk about conflict minerals reporting, which I know has been a big hassle for a lot of our distributor members. Uh, the Trump administration has made some headlines recently about conflict minerals reporting, and uh, there's some hope that maybe this thing's going to go away. My message to you today is let's not pop the champagne corks just yet. There's still a lot of variables and a long way to go, and some other factors that may mean you're just not going to get away with getting rid of these things. Uh, for those of you who don't remember, the conflict minerals reporting requirement was an element of the Dodd-Frank financial reform legislation that was passed into law in 2010. Um, Dodd-Frank was really about reforming a lot to do with the financial services sector, and we really didn't think it would have anything to do with uh, distribution, but a little known and little discussed, little debated uh, provision within the law required publicly traded folks to file annual reports with the Securities Exchange Commission certifying whether or not their products had conflict minerals as inputs. And uh, conflict minerals were um, defined as tungsten, tantalum, tin, or gold. And a conflict mineral was something that was mined in, in the Democratic Republic of Congo or an adjacent country. So this uh, requirement went into effect and we didn't really even think about it. And then all of a sudden our members started getting calls from their customers saying, hey, we've got to file this conflict minerals report. Do you guys have any conflict minerals in your products? And you know, everybody started scr scratching their heads trying to figure, I don't know, how do we figure that out? So even though we didn't really have a legal requirement to file these reports, when your customer says, I need your help, that means a lot and you try to help them comply. So we've been under this reporting regime for a few years now and some folks have figured out how to handle it and some have just sort of muddled through. Um, the next filing deadline is May 31st, but the Trump administration could preempt that. Uh, an executive order, draft executive order, was leaked a couple weeks ago that uh, indicated that the president would suspend this reporting requirement for two years. Now, the president cannot eliminate the reporting requirement through executive order. That will require an act of Congress to change the law. But within the law, there was an allowance for national security reasons for the president to suspend the law for two years. Um, it looks like he's going to do that. We saw the draft uh, order, and he's citing national security as a reason to do this, and also citing some really high compliance costs that I think those of us who have had to work through this issue uh, are not surprised to see that the compliance cost is really high. So the president can't um, eliminate this requirement, but he can postpone it for a couple of years. So you know, we're thinking, well, good, that will give Congress time to eliminate the requirement. Maybe, maybe not. But even if Congress does re re um, repeal the requirement, the European Union is currently uh, working through a reporting regime of their own. So if you have customers that are European owned or trade in the Eurozone, you may not be off the hook because they're likely to come back at you too saying they need your help. Now the European Union rules are lar largely similar to the United States, but there are probably going to be some significant differences. Um, Look, the Obama administration didn't really enforce this thing very much. They didn't want to enforce it. They didn't know how to enforce it. And that really hasn't been the issue with your customers. Your customers have been as afraid of shaming campaigns from non-governmental organizations and interest groups. Uh, they've been as afraid of that as they have of SEC violations. Now, the president or the uh, the CEO of the company signs these um, reports under penalty of perjury, so that's real, and there are real uh, penalties that could come to bear. But for the most part, your customers are concerned about being the subject of a shaming campaign. Oh, brand X uses blood diamonds, kind of thing, and uh, and so that wouldn't go away if they had the EU requirement as well. And there might be some pressure from NGOs for U.S. companies to continue to make these disclosures. And that those NGOs have a lot of weight right now in a global economy. There's a larger issue here, is all I'm saying. So even if this re requirement is suspended in the United States for two years, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go away for you. And then think about the larger global economy. There is a trend 
worldwide towards requiring more supply chain visibility. People not only want to know where this stuff is at any given point in time, they also want to know what's in it and where it came from. You can think about the dozens of stories you've heard of uh, corporations who got so, uh, caught unknowingly sourcing material from places or having labor sources that were unsavory. And you know that does real damage to your brand. And nobody wants to be a target of those kind of campaigns. So those uh, issues about supply chain visibility and where stuff is coming from, what policies you have to protect uh, your labor force, um, even issues around human trafficking reporting. Those things are coming and they're not slowing down. So even if conflict minerals slows down for a minute, and it, even if these sort of supply chain visibility requirements slow down in the United States in the age of Trump, our increase, increasingly global economy means you're going to keep seeing these sort of odd requirements. Those of you who have dealt with the European Union restrictions on hazardous substances or the uh, waste electronic products regulations know what I'm talking about. This isn't new to you. So what are we doing about it? We will continue to uh, move in Congress to try to get the reporting requirements repealed for conflict minerals. In the meantime, you can also go to our website, nad.org slash conflict minerals. We've put a tool there where you can go and get a lot of uh, policy statements from your manufacturers. And manufacturers out there, we'd love to host your material. We've asked for it. Uh, we just flat out link to your product, uh, to your uh, declaration, your policy declara declaration statements. So it's, uh, it's easy for you. Just tell us that you want to be involved and we'll help you do it. Um, that's all I have on conflict minerals. If you have any questions, just give me an email, eorlet at nad.org, and happy to talk more about this issue or any other policy issue with you. I uh, hope this was helpful, and see you soon. Thanks for supporting NAD.